Up next, Two Hotheads, where activism happens. Boston Uncensored Radio. Back live, Two Hotheads, where activism happens. We've got in-studio guests today. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we're eating brownies. Have you eaten, your, eaten <laughs> yeah, a piece of your good. brownie yet? It's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good. good. <laughs> yup. Yeah, getting, getting we got there. students in here in the studio. Yes, Student we do. teachers and people who are running schools. Ed- it's an higher, higher education. Higher education. It, it's a big. It's a. It's a big thing in, in other states. And now that uh, Massachusetts has been uh, moving forward, uh, I, these guys are pioneers in Massachusetts in terms of education, outreach, and activism. So I would love to welcome you guys onto the show. We have Melissa Fitzgerald and Michael Fitzgerald from the New England Grassroots Institute. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We, can we get our round of applause? We do oh, that. I think we lost it. Oh, I we think lost we, it. I think we got to find a new voice track. Someone got into our shit and took away our clap dog. Uh, without our, cl- without our clap uh, sound effect, we're nothing. No, that's <laughs> bullshit. Over. We don't need it. <laughs> All right, welcome. Any- anyway, Let's welcome do it to up. our show. Woo. We'll do it anyway. Woo. Our own sound effects. We don't need sign effects. We're loud. <laughs> Thank you guys for having us here, and <laughs> congratulations on one year, man. That's really cool. And you have a really great feel to this place. I really dig it. Yeah. Oh, so thank, thank you. you for having us. Thanks yeah. Thank you for coming, oh. Michael and Melissa. Yes. 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 But you're husband and wife. Yes, we are. Yeah. Thirty years 30 now years we've been together. Is. How did you uh, decide to open this grassroots institute? Why did you decide to do it? Uh, this has been a lifelong dream, and. Um, I've basically been involved in the industry for 40 years since I was a young man. I don't want to give my age away too much, 53. <laughs> um, but uh, as far as medical, I've, I've um, been a caregiver for a number of years now. I had a, a bunch of friends who you know, had issues uh, during the 80s and went through the AIDS crisis and lost a lot of friends that way. So we started becoming caregivers back then and um, kind of changed our lives a little. And we've always been growers, uh, hardcore deadheads. So, um, you know, it just came along with the territory, kind of. Uh, but what really happened to focus on education was I became ill a few years back and had some surgery to my head. And um, luckily, I'm fine now. Everything was benign. But um, it changed my life. It changed my life. I was told I may not walk again. And just through the power of cannabis and uh, no, n- no pharmaceuticals at all, yeah. we are here. Yeah. We are here, and we want to give back. You know, we want to give back. Yeah. So that's that's in a nutshell. I can't, you know, uh, this guy uh, Senator Keenan from mm-hmm. Quincy, yes. where you guys are located. Been following him. Oh yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he wants to get rid of medical marijuana. We know this. He's he's pretending he doesn't, but that's what he's trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, he made statements for the during the campaign in front of the state house. He said uh, there is no such thing as medical marijuana. Uh-huh. And and with something we always constantly point to, Heather is really all over it. Is about and me too because I'm same as you, living proof. Giving up prescription friggin' pills yeah. on a daily basis for whatever, whether it's six months or in my case, fifteen years for cannabis, it's a no brainer. Like right. I, I, you got to share that. Like right. cannabis stopped. I don't need to take pills for fifteen years. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You can smoke weed. Vaporize, and then take other eat this brownie to deal right with here. The first pills and the side effects, Absolutely. you know. From yeah, how is that helping your organs? I, you know, I mean, it is kills you. Everything down. Just, just think about like anyone that's on these pills for a long period of time knows this. Think what, like, especially for someone that already like for eat. For me, I love to eat, but a lot of times I have upset stomach. That's why I really don't drink. I don't like to get sick. Drinking makes me sick. Yep. Pills, any type of pill. If I take an aspirin, a Tylenol. It kills my stomach. I have to eat a lot before taking that pill. Wow. And the yeah. thing is, if you're taking pills every day, you don't feel like eating at all. Not at all. No. And it's just all you're taking is pills in your stomach. It just right. eats your stomach up. I don't know what it is, but it just... So, never mind the rest of your organs. Right. So you found your way over to the cannabis group. Absolutely. Yeah. love it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I eat all the time. There you I'm go. Healthy I'm healthy as can be. you eat now. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, that was student made. Yeah, we got to talk about that. <laughs> also, you have a student here, yeah. Sam Spire. Yes. Who and brought us a, a, a brownie. 
Yes, yes, and he has impressed us so much that he is going to be teaching a cooking class for us that's coming up, and we'll be oh, putting that you online guys, very soon. Yeah, tell us tell us more about the classes the that curriculum. you yeah. yeah the curriculum and what you guys offer in terms of uh, education. Well, excellent. Um, yeah, this is we just finished this morning our uh, first three semesters, and uh, fantastic. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and we, we did uh, Thursday, you, Friday, and Saturdays, and we ran about fifteen students in each class. We had about forty five students. And we just had the best time. We had the just everything opened up for everybody. It was just absolutely fantastic. And we're teaching politics. We start right out with politics, and, and which actually goes right along with history. I don't know how to separate the two. You know what I mean? I, I love to yell about my politics, so I understand mm -hmm. I'm with the right company here. Yeah, uh, so we start with so. the politics history. We go right into science. You know, we want to talk cannabinoids. We want to know about CBDs. We want to know about stopping seizures. We want to know how to put a tincture under the tongue, get to that mucous membrane, stop an epileptic attack in its tracks. 15 seconds, and it's under there, it's done, it's not going through the liver, you're all set. Uh, so we, we go through everything. Second half of every class, we do a grow class every night because uh, I am really, really against having to pay the outrageous prices that go along with treatment centers. So I am about trying to get everybody to grow their own when they can, and we really want to push that big time. Um, we want to get right out into the street and help people nonstop. That is what we're about, and we're going to prove it. We're not just going to talk about it. Are you worried about, uh, having said that, are you worried about grow your own caregivers, the state house, right. getting rid of it, the, the, the city feds. town, <laughs> zoning it out of, you know, the bus go on. I, I definitely am. We just came back from a couple of years out in California, and we fought hard against a lot of ordinance issues. Uh, we were in Shasta County in the city of Reading, and they actually shut us down, and shut down every dispensary just before Christmas two years ago. And they said to us, you can no longer grow in your homes. And what they used as an excuse was an EPA regulation against pesticides in the home. So they said to everyone, first off, we're shutting down every dispensary in Reading, and all of you folks in all of Shasta County can no longer grow in your homes. Yeah. We're not stopping you from growing. You just have to go in an outbuilding behind your home. Yeah. So, you know, my first question was, you know, who's selling the lumber here? Which one of you select when it's selling the lumber? You know, I mean, it, And it, like it's the pesticide crazy. thing, like if they want to regulate that out, most people that grow medical cannabis responsibly aren't generally using pesticides i mean i, I, I work to, at a grow shop they're not coming in for right. pesticides i tried to explain to them what even the underground one. was yeah. you know what i mean in, in natural remedies but yeah. you know you're talking people to use. a wall yeah you know when they want to do something um they do it and then you know of course they they backed down after about six months and said that they had gotten bad advice from their lawyer yeah but by that time which means wanted, the public was pissed off you got that right and yeah. that's the issue that they're going to have like that the whole problem with our cannabis uh, in industry and the whole regulation thing is that regulations are either wrong-headed or they don't exist at all because the government is so afraid they're they're so afraid on this issue to deal with it to mm -hmm. deal with it mm -hmm. uh, in la that was the issue is that they, they to acknowledge the will of the voters yeah, which is of, overwhelming so i hope massachusetts state. gets their shit together and and fucking enact like mayor menino let's hear from mayor menino they had a city council hearing recently right this guy has been against the Freedom Rally for decades. He, he we, the Ma Mass Can Normal had to sue him three times to have the Freedom Rally. Right. He's always said negative things against marijuana culture. We never been with us, and you know, privately, some of our citizens that you know, myself and some others have been trying to work him behind the scenes, and through some other politicians locally, the Democratic Party. So people, local people, have been working him, and uh, and working some of the people around him more specifically, mm. and all of a sudden medical passes mm -hmm. and they have their city hall hearing and it's announced right in the phoenix from the mayor's you know appointed key people from the department of health from the uh planning commission mm -hmm. and they said mayor menino wants to follow the will of the people and set up the regulations and do this right excellent yeah he's 100 percent behind the will of the people on this why aren't the rest of these fools saying that? Why aren't they? Exactly. And then, you, you know what it is, is we have a bunch of really stupid people talking about something <laughs> they know nothing yeah, about. Yeah, they don't understand. And they set up these regulations and they really don't understand. They don't understand us. They don't understand the business. And they don't want to ask. Yeah. <laughs> they, That's the issue. Yeah. Menino's like, come on down. The hemp is come down. Whoever, come down. I want to hear from you. I want to find out what I need to be doing. And that's what 
Absolutely. Where the hell are you, John Keenan? Yeah. Senator yeah. Keenan? Well, you know what I have to say? We speak about him quite often in class yes, because we're in Quincy and he is out of Quincy and we are activists. We love the street. We will raise money and defeat him even though he is a Democrat. I yeah. am for a Democrat. But I will not take that from my own party. Absolutely not. I will not, not accept that from anybody. And we will start throwing money against him. We will run somebody against him. This is bullshit. Yeah, let's run someone Under against him. Under the guise of protecting people. Yeah. I mean, that, and it's it's such an insidious argument about, you know. And he still wants to help the patients, he says. You know, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? I exactly. am a patient. A and we help patients. Yep. You know, and I don't see him out there helping us. No. Not at all. He's yeah. lying too. Like oh, he's miserable. Yes, he is. Everything I read in the Patriot Ledger. Yeah. And yep. why? What is he getting out of it? I mean, I don't understand. I mean, he's a Democrat. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, his his base. You know, we just they all voted vote. for it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Does, doesn't what, he know what what a certain percentage is, and he's on the losing end? But it's end? under the same. Like I said, it's very insidious the way he does it because he sets it up as oh, we're just protecting. You know, yeah. we don't want to have minors getting access. It's like no, we you're not going to no. get access without their parents' permission anyway. Right. You're just creating this imagined. Right issue so yep. that it makes it seem like you're doing the right thing and I'm glad that you mentioned your activism because I want to know about that I mean how we've been talking about like we want to we want to protest this guy even though yeah. e even though he's probably not even going to go very far with this um, we'll see uh, how can we how can we fight back you're talking about you know raising money and that's a huge way to do it, it can we get some of you you guys and your students to go down I mean go to his office and uh, we, you know, we absolutely really are planning that's things like by. that yeah we, <laughs> yeah, yeah we just want to see how far he wants to go with this yeah. we prefer he see the light and stop but, yeah you know he's hanging around with Heidi Heidelman there and, <laughs> and just another nasty, nasty Sore person loser. that we really don't need to hear <laughs> Just from. Uh, yeah, they're misinformed folks. Um, on, so, on purpose. Yeah, yes, yes. You know, it's it's sixty three percent. I mean, what do you have to say about yeah. that? It's like it's it's not like they're not hearing us, they're ignoring us. They're ignoring the good yes. things we do. They're ignoring the facts. They're ignoring everything. I mean, and, and the question is, though, I really wonder, what it, what is in it for them? Do you think it's a pharmaceutical company that's that's getting behind them and saying, you know, because what else is there is no. the advantage here? No. You it's, don't think it's, so? He's from Quincy. Right. It's, uh, a, yeah. it's a historically, you know, there's a reason why the governor's race, uh, Deval Patrick and uh, um, what was the other guy? There was three guys, Sandy, uh, the Republican dude. And then the uh, uh, treasurer, what was his name? Tim Cahill. Oh, Cahill, yeah. Cahill did really good in Quincy. Yeah. And it's that kind of conservative man versus a more liberal Democrat thing right. going on. Right. And that's what wins in Quincy for a, you know, a certain demographic, those law and order dudes. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, the section we're in, we're right on Hancock Street. And they're actually taking it down and doing a huge um, rebuilding in there, $1.7 billion rehab in there. Huh. But I was reading in the paper the other day that they've had so many liquor license applications, I believe huh. 30, for oh the block God. I'm on. You know, and when I see that, you know, I just start to wonder, I'm like, what are we setting back up here? We're not allowed. You want to push us off to some red light district in Quincy, yet you want to put 30 bars and liquor stores right on that beautiful street that you're trying to rehab? I know. I have nothing then, against bars and rehab. I know, you know but what's really but, worse? But, you, you know what I mean? And I know. Do we need 30 in a couple of block areas? I know. When, when we're not accepted, you yeah, know, I, yeah. I don't get their, their logic at all. Well, then, because it's the, the argument about rehab How about and, and marijuana addicts needing to go to rehab and blah, 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 you know? It's, it's, a, it's a crap it's argument, too. Blood. Complete they're being, nonsense. They're it's, being forced into that by the court system. If, of course, yeah. yeah if you're given a choice between man, jail or right, they, rehab. Right. They said to us when we were younger... Go to the army, go to jail. Now they say go to rehab. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And it's the same thing. You know, they're just it's more of a force issue. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely. pretty yeah, it's pretty ridiculous and uh, and we all know it and that's the thing. I mean every sixty three percent and probably more it probably more. knows it too because at this point, I mean there's been national polls in terms of the uh, Colorado and Washington and whether or not Obama should leave those states alone and, and right. by far the majority in, in America as a whole believe that we should be, you know leave them alone the That's will of true. the voters should reign supreme and it was very clear in massachusetts with the will of the voters and even in quincy and, and even, even in, in that quincy. senate i keep saying quincy it's a greatest senate district he now represents this guy started out as a state rep but i think what's going to be interesting is what what's actually what will happen at the state house will, will they have some kind of uh, crazy regulation yes. like how soon will it take for that really to happen where you see 
the governor of Massachusetts talking about signing it, making a deal with the House and the Senate leaders to have a bill. I mean, I don't think we're there yet, but uh, we got to. That's why I think we need to be very vocal. And I think what Heather said, we, yeah, we need to do some type of protest. We have a situation. We need there. to protest that man and oh, his absolutely. bill. Absolutely, absolutely. He keeps it visibly. Up coming, all of us. Coming. We have a situation here, I believe, in Massachusetts that um, is unique in the sense that, uh, from what I see, and I talk to a lot of people, there are a lot of big money people trying to open treatment centers. And I think that the town lawyers, the city lawyers, and everybody is going to be hearing an earful from very educated, very well-financed people on the treatment center side mm -hmm. so it's going to be a real push and shove between the ordinances and you know w when we were in california not to keep going back there but uh in the places we were at they did not have the financing to go against the towns they right. really didn't but here it's a different ball game oh, yeah. and we're already seeing advertisements i mean i was just reading the phoenix we're already seeing you know organizations like canamed yeah. who are advertising in the phoenix and you know it's clearly there's people have been waiting for this for a long time that's for sure and i imagine so so you guys primarily operate as as an educational resource correct? absolutely Patient, and for yeah, jobs to, to, to train people for jobs to absolutely. do them the right way give them education yep. to show Training them how to do these caregivers. things all in one place Yes, patient caregiver relations is one of our biggest things. But let me just um, add, we also have a nonprofit that will be coming out next week, and it's called the Massachusetts Medical Marijuana Treatment Council. There we go. And I have doctors from Bingham and Women's on this council that are going to be oh coming gosh. out with us. We That's have, incredible. We have a state trooper. We have two pharmacists. We have three nurses. Yes. Can we, we can we announce any of their names? Can we say? I, that I can't until next that week, that but it will. Uh, it will have it up on. Is the state the trooper week. the one? Um, uh, Hawks. Is no, 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 no. Somebody you wouldn't know. All but, right. uh, and I just want to. I just want to. I love say state this. troopers coming off a of weed. Right. That's we have a professional caregiver course that we're actually starting next week, and it's for nurses and doctors and caregivers only. Okay. And the reason we started this is. Um, we have five doctors attending this course already. Yeah, that's five great. doctors. Wow. So we want to change this so that the patients don't feel so intimidated. Educate so that the doc the side, the you, you know, the side. AMA has never, never educated their doctors about cannabis Nurses. since the Flexner Report of 1910 closed all <laughs> herbal schools, that's of great. course, right? And, yep. and that was John Rockefeller making sure that the pharmacies got their share right. of everything. And then in 1937, we had the Marijuana Tax Stamp Act. There was, it was 600. 600 patented cannabis recipes, uh, 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 prescriptions Messes. out there before they did this. And now all of a sudden they want us to think that in the past bunch of years, cannabis is no good. But why was it 600 patented medicines between 1850 and 1937? Yeah, exactly. Why was it okay then cool. without any problems? Yeah. But it was because... Why was it the first and best medicine prescribed historically right it, it wouldn't kill a kid because it works yeah and it wouldn't kill you absolutely not like you know you wouldn't you know no we got a phone call why don't we, we do. take a phone Let's call take a phone call six one seven six oh six four one two two is our phone number and uh welcome to the show what's your name hello oh we lose him Did we lose him? hello hey you're live on this radio can you hear us Keenan, is that you? No. <laughs> yeah, I think we lost that call. Uh oh. So we were talking about the doctors, though. I think that is such a great place to be going. That yes. you have like whether it's three, five, you get all the doctors who are for this together, I mean, educating each other. Doctors are willing together. to learn. It's yeah. these associations yes. 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 that are are unwilling to necessarily, and the governments that yeah. are unwilling Absolutely. to learn. We have to break this stigma. We have to yeah. just get out there and break this stigma, and we can do it one doctor at a time, yeah. one nurse at a time, one right. patient yeah. at a time. Yeah. Great. Woo! Right on. I just wanted to say a lot of patients are intimidated on their end to have that conversation, and the yeah. quick right. Absolutely. To that. But what we also are well aware of is a lot of doctors are also intimidated. They're kind of the gatekeeper. They don't. They're not aware. So we really do want to bring forward a professional um, aspect to that for them as well. We want it to be Excellent. a good experience for everyone, and we want everyone to just know their history and understand. It yes. Is science. Right. right. We have a phone call. Excellent. Hello. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Who? What's good. your name? Wait. Can you speak up? What's your name? Hello? What's your name? My name is Danilo. How are you, how you doing? Oh, yeah, Danilo. Hey, Danilo. We know you. What's hey, going Danilo. on, folks? <laughs> What's going on, brother? Hello, Hello Danilo. I knew you guys were going to be on today, and I thought I'd just call and lend my support and just 
say some of the wonderful things that I've heard since, you know, and learned since I've been in this school in Quincy right. and some of the things that I've learned, you know, that have helped save my life as far as being a medical cannabis patient. Tell us about it. right ahead, yeah. All right, well, let's just start off with the fact that I have epilepsy, you know, and I was diagnosed as a very young child, you know, and uh, I've been on pretty much every epilepsy type med that's been out there that's approved by the FDA, and I still had chronic seizures, like as if I was on nothing, you know. Uh, however, when I was a teenager was when I started consuming cannabis, and I was seizure-free for that whole time, wow. you know, and... When I got into my 20s, I started consuming cannabis again, and my seizures stopped, you know. And then when I got employed for a nice little professional job, I had to stop consuming cannabis because they drug tested and stuff. That's not right. And uh, I started having the seizures again, you know, and back on the medication again, and none of them worked. And my doctors have wanted to give me, like, implants and do brain surgery, oh you know. And I've been seizure-free for months now you know, by way of, you know, medical cannabis. Congratulations. Wow. You know, and the things yes. that I learned at this school was how to, you know, how to, like, procure medication, how to, you know, learn about organics and learn the differences between, you know, bad medicines and good medicines and, you know, how to organically, you know, grow and be a patient, you know, and also, too, look out for other people that might have the same condition or other conditions. You know, and it's just basically, it's like we're one big happy family trying to help uh, one another, you know, and help each other. Thank you, Janello. We love oh, it. What, a, what a wonderful thing to hear. <laughs> we can Definitely. tell that it's a big happy family because it's... Uh... We, uh, you know, when I was at, I was at the fe you know, hemp fest that just passed, and I heard, hey, who wants to make some butter with me? <laughs> you know, and I looked, and that's how I met, you know, Mike there, and... Wow. You know, and, and it's just been one big happy family, like, ever since, you know, and all of us have such a great connection, That's you know, incredible. and for anybody out there listening, we are here for you yep. with open arms. We really are. That's really fantastic are. to awesome. hear. Danilo, awesome. thank you so much for calling in. You're That's welcome. Fabulous. Anytime. Love what you guys are doing. Take care. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And and good luck with all of your, you know, it sounds like your health issues are under control. And that's. Yeah, they that's are. Incredible. You know, and it's all because of some of the things that I've learned at this school, you know, because I kind of had it right, but I've, you know, gotten better, you know. I want to ask like, you, well, you know? wh one thing, Danilo, uh, your yeah, story okay. about having to quit because of a job. Yeah. I think we've yeah. all been there. Mm -hmm. In so many yeah. respects, I think that this drug war, this war against marijuana users, is a lot of about employment and a free speech and living who mm -hmm. you know, be in, using our own medicine. I mean, it's about you, you. You had to make a choice between having seizures or having a job in a certain mm -hmm. case. Like, how have yeah. you gotten over that? Are you still looking for work? Does that still affect you? Are you? Does well, this help out, at, you know, set you yeah, up for a bit? Yeah, I mean, well, what's, how it's helped me is, like, see, um, I mean, as far as now, like, you know, I'm not doing jobs that are going to discriminate against me because I consume medical cannabis because I've just been able to be blessed in that way as of now. But I know that at one point I was unable to work because the seizures were so bad, you know, but because of the cannabis, I'm able to go back to work now. Good. You know, and I'm working a full-time job. Excellent. That's fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. Good for you. Like, I'm, you know, at one point they were like, you know, the doctors were saying, you're going to be on disability for the rest of your life. I know, huh? You yeah, know, you, and, and I'm not. Yeah. You know, and this is why. So I'll let you guys go because I'm sure you got other callers and plenty of other things to I want to say, about. brother, brother, I, I love to hear that because that's almost the same situation I'm in. If it wasn't for cannabis, yeah. I wouldn't be able to work. Exactly, exactly. Even though exactly. it excludes me from some work because of drug testing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could get a great job making great money, mm -hmm. but I'd have to, t I yeah. can't do it for my medicine. I can't. I can't yeah, give up exactly. my Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I could do the same thing, but at the same time, I don't really like the idea of sitting in a cubicle, you know? Yeah. So, but you know, I do what makes me happy, and then this is making me happy because I can get up every day with a sense of pride and work a job and feel like a productive member of society and pay my taxes. And then go and be an advocate for other patients and, yeah. and help exactly. others. I mean, that's exactly. incredible. And exactly. be a positive person. You're always positive. I, I, I Thanks, did a little man. video with Thanks, you, man. and uh, it was awesome. Uh -huh. I love yeah, you. Thanks, man. I was happy to do it, man. Anything for the cause. You know that, man. All right. Right on. Thank you again, Danilo. You. One more round of applause for Danilo. That's awesome. To hear. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow.
Six one seven six zero six four one two two. We're speechless. Incredible. The hotheads. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, that's what I we. That's it's what it's amazing. all about, you guys. Yeah, I mean, it really is. You know, we get more out of this than, <laughs> than they do. Anybody. I swear. We Every have, one of them. We've met so many people just like Danilo. Different circumstances, different illnesses. But the story is all the same. I can't go to get that job I want. I'm doing this because of it. They tell me I have to sacrifice my health in order to make some money. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's crazy. It is. Uh, more power to you. You need to, to stop. Keep going, brother. Yeah, and, and maybe sometime soon it'll be covered by insurance. And then, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't want to hold my breath. But, I mean, think about it. It's, it's a human right is to be able to, to hold down a job and to, to feel secure in your health. I mean, yeah. absolutely. Just, yeah. It's, it's Especially when you're basic. helping people and you're not hurting anybody. I mean, exactly. that if you're hurting somebody, that's a crime. Uh, marijuana, using it for medicine is not hurting anybody. Not at all. No, the, the sentences against it is far worse more than harmful. any of the, more harmful than any of the, you know, using it. Uh, Jimmy Carter is the one who really said that the best. You know, when, when, when he first talked, talked about decrim in 1976, uh, I was so psyched. I was actually down in Washington, D.C., working with Normal, doing the wow. July 1st to July 4th shows down there. I did that all through the mid-'70s. Um, and when Jimmy Carter came out and he said decrim, that was just, it was so exciting. We thought we had the battle won for a little bit there. Alaska had already, you know, done their thing and, and decrim there, and, and things were starting to look really good. But, you know... Um, Things happened, and, and we got Ronald Reagan in right after Jimmy Carter, and, yeah. and things went really downhill. Backlash. But what he said was, you, there shouldn't be a punishment that you give to somebody that is worse than the crime that they're being charged exactly. with. No. And, and it stuck with me such all a simple, these years. It's such a simple logic that... <sighs> It's unbelievable that we're still fighting yeah. this fight. Yeah, absolutely. How many years yeah. later? It's scary yeah. for some people years trapped later. in the middle of the country. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we have it pretty good here yeah. in, in lots of places. I mean, but you still, know, it ain't that good. Yeah, I hear you, but I'd rather be you here still than get Kansas, the boot man. in your back. <laughs> You'll still get the boot in your back if they suspect anything and charge break into your house. I uh, mean, yeah. battering ram. Yeah. I mean, I just that frightens. I don't even want to talk about it. You know, it's just so. Yeah, we don't need to go negative th- like that, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> seriously. The world is. Uh, we, we're still fighting. Yeah, we're oh, winning. Actually, we're yeah. winning. We're going in the right direction. A lot of things happening, yep. but uh, we're still up against a you lot of money, a lot of government money. What's amazing is, you know, you That's say we're is. fighting, and I agree with you. We're fighting with a smile on our face moving yep. forward, and they're fighting with a frown on their oh, face yeah. looking at us, man. Yep. And I know what side I'd rather be on. I know. Right? Truly, mm-hmm. and and the, and we the know thing we're about on the right side of history, you know how yes, we talk yeah. about it, is it the drug firms? Is it, it's the yes. government, big pharma, it's the government money. That's so really what it is, though. Lobbyists, it, with, it, with the government money. They, they exactly. the government is so big, mm-hmm. they don't want to give up their money. Like in yeah. a stat, like DEA, I, Department I, of Justice, the defense attorneys, the e- probation department, right. Right. The cops, I, I, like they're just—it's marijuana is easy. I Those say, are the best people in the courthouse. I, ha ha! You got busted right. with weed. I say that all they, the They're time. happy to see us. Yeah, my they, probation officer loved me. We right. talked about music for a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> what, why? Why wouldn't the DEA want to chase us around? Right? I mean, they have the best planes. They have their four wheel quads to go into the woods after it's us. It's easy. We're pretty harmless people. They love chasing us around because you know what I mean. It's just fun for them, and I think that you know. To try and say that you're going to take the DEA money away from them and get them to stop doing these nasty things to us is a little bit crazy. I think it's the DEA that we really have to watch for. They are so well-funded. They're not going to want to give up any of their money. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? They like chasing us it's around true. because we're nice people. And it people. funds a lot of cops' salaries. Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, you know, they keeping the, the private they prison have. industry going and... Uh, you know, if, if all of a sudden the, one of the biggest crimes that they're persecuting people for isn't a crime anymore, that's going to make it hard to justify all that overtime right. pay yeah. and yeah. all those bonuses. It, private, and all prisons, that, you know, private prisons. Private prisons. They're making money and they're doing it, you know, really horribly. Now, look at the uh, the Papers, Please law that Jan Brewer tried to push down, down in Arizona. Huh. Um, you know, her, her chief gem. of staff is, oh, yeah. is somebody who owns private prisons. And then when you see why they want to do the immigration laws... You could say, oh, yeah. oh, my goodness, they're making money. They're making of money. It's also free labor for them, plus the, those Absolutely government contracts. They're getting all the money, you yeah. know, yeah, percentage of their profits. Yeah. It's a for-profit 
prison industry. I mean, Absolutely. just saying that out loud, isn't that mind blowing? It that really that's is. Even a, it really it, is. You, you, what a concept. Absolutely. You know, what we learned in school this semester was 90% of all what, the paint in the U.S. is made by prison population at about 20 cents an hour. And I'm like, yeah. of course they want all the 20 to 30-year-old guys in there producing right. paint for right. them. It's slave labor. Yeah. Of course it is. And, and who are all, the people who are there? It's all People margin, of color, you know? poor yes. people. Yes. The residuals of society, yep. quote unquote, yep. that, you know... It would cost it costs too much to try and uh, give them some education and a job, even though it costs way more to put them in prison. Those costs go back to the government yes. and to these private companies. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's advantageous to them, it even sure though is. it's it's a fraction to send people to, to college or send people to trade school and right. have them contribute to society because mm-hmm. they don't mm-hmm. want them. We to. are so messed up in that. I it's, just you know yeah. I just don't get how you know this small group of people gets it. Why doesn't the larger group of people get it? We, well, they we write us off larger... as stoners. And yeah. therefore, that well, we don't have an opinion that's, yeah. that's it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's divide and conquer, two sides against each other. Yes. Focused mm-hmm. on that, not focused on the bigger picture. Yeah. But where exactly. we are focused here, oh, and yeah. you know what, and we're you guys are moving ex- exactly in the right direction. It exactly. seems like you have been Building your entire community. lives, and uh, you know it's really a positive thing, and it's it's very empowering to hear that you have um, been doing this for so long, mm. um, and and that it continues, and that finally, you know, the right. the, the will of the people are coming around. Absolutely, you know, I, one of the things that we really are trying to. Um, teach into our class is is giving back now we are trying to go to a lot of hospice centers and we are already set up to get into nine senior citizen homes to go in there and give harm reduction wow. classes we want to go in there and mm-hmm. say to them you know what you don't have to smoke nana uh, there are there are cookies now and brownies <laughs> not only that we will have students come by and give them to you Wow. Okay, we are trying to, and we have some students right here with the us who will tell you cookie. exactly what I say in class <laughs> is, we will support you in every way. We will get into these places for you, and then we're going to ask you to go back in there and make sure you're taking care of people. What kind of pharmaceutical industry uh, representatives are doing that? What kind of doctor, even even doctors that right. are doing that, that right. are going individually to mm-hmm. senior centers and, mm-hmm. and trying to do outreach? We don't know how else to, to get out there and do the best work we can. And, and what we really want to, we want to reach the people people who aren't really familiar with cannabis right, right yeah. now the older yeah. people um you know there's a whole segment of society that they need some help with it they should Absolutely do they and do. they need some friendly people going in there and just speaking to them in a nice ma- way and saying you know you can get off some of these pharmaceuticals with your doctor's permission i'm not trying to you know go about there and saying you know just quit these things but we want to talk about it we want to bring it up we want them to know there are other options beside the the, the hardcore pharmaceutical pills that they're taking right. so that's we, what we, we are can about. at least bring out some education on a great topic there's so much great science and politics and history yeah it's a it's a fun topic no matter where you stand it really is yeah. now you have an open house this we coming do. saturday right yes yes that would be on the 12th january 12th um from noon to six and we're at 1458 hancock street in quincy and we invite you all to come by with we're, we're throwing the pizza down so come on down oh. have awesome some. <laughs> and um you know, we have uh, we have a nice grow up set up, so you can just kick the tires if you want to look at things like that and and, and all that type of stuff. And wow. um, we will, you know, talk to anybody about anything. We really want support. We want people who want to work with us. If you have some ideas, my door is open. I kid you not. Come in and talk to us about activism. Come in and talk to us about giving back, and you will have a place with us. That's Excellent. Fantastic. And if, if in case Excellent. people can't make it. Uh, on the twelfth, how are other? How can people get involved? Uh, well, you can go to our website, which is grassroot four twenty dot com, mm-hmm. and um, you can check us out there. And uh, again, we're giving um, the caregiver class, uh, which is a seminar, just a three hour seminar that we're doing for the nurses and doctors, and uh, that's going to be on January the twenty eighth and uh, February the ninth. Also, a caregiver class, mm-hmm. and we have our basic eight week semester class that is starting. Uh, on the 16th of, of this month and um, so anybody can look that up you can come by to our open house and talk yeah. to us about it um, you know we really want to help anybody and everybody we, we can so yeah. you know if you have an open heart and an open mind come on by and talk there you go awesome. that's fantastic and you can tell that your hearts are, are there and in the right place you're not in this to make money you're not in this to we never get paid we, we, uh, we, <laughs> we, we can do a lot of things but we like to hang with the people educate we know all about that <laughs> but we yeah. do but we do yeah. like brownies we and do stuff, have fun so. we, can, <laughs> we are very happy at what we do <laughs> grassroot 
420.com. Yes, right. thank you. Yes. We work for treats. And you're on, <laughs> you're on, face, you're on Facebook. We're and on yes, Facebook. We Come join our yes, group. We, are. we right. have yeah. a lot of great people posting for us, education, articles, science. Um, we got a lot going on out there. I'm on yeah. there. I'm on there. Yeah, right. you're Excellent. out there. Yeah. And we'll post it on our Facebook page today. Right awesome. Thank you. Who's awesome. Listening. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, are you guys uh, sticking around for a, a little bit later? You, I, I, if you would like us to, oh, we would hang would for a awesome. while. That's that's totally cool. I'm having fantastic. some fun here. I love it. We, we have a phone call with uh, an author, a writer, a journalist, and he's uh, this guy, like talking about cannabis and economics. That's and too- also like even like the the, the best mo- models and you know you really kind of I like what he's doing. Great. And you know, writes for what is it? Alternet. Alternet. All alternate right. and they oh. have their whole they have a whole segment on alternate about the drug war yeah and uh and news about the drug war they're so, like the number one source for well, you can be sure we'll be looking up that, that today yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. and i bet you guys have some stuff to say to him and, and some questions to ask too so definitely stick around and we got to play some clips from our one year this is our one year anniversary show unbelievable um, unbelievable think, how Excellent, about i play guys. how about i play a little clip and then we'll do some music yeah what are we gonna play all what right are you gonna let's play? uh Okay. What let's do you have? Do. I have I have all sorts of stuff. I have um, Occupy Martha Coakley. Oh my god. I have uh, Guar. I have C Money. I have Barney Frank. Wow. Uh, wow. Who, who who should we hear from first? I Here. don't know. Someone else should pick. I like C Money. I like Barney, Barney Frank. Frank. Guar. All I mean right. Guar. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. hear from Barney Frank. Right. This was from our uh, interview with Barney Frank uh, at the Freedom Rally. And let me see if I can get this to work. I have a question for you, Barney. Thank you so much, first of all, for coming here. Um, you made a good point out there that I, I have definitely been feeling as I've been trying to get people registered to vote is that you're probably right in that a good amount of people here are not registered to vote or don't plan on voting. Why do you think that is? How do we we'll be on the couch doing bong hits instead of voting. It's so you know, Dude! <laughs> I know someone who did it last, last election. People don't appreciate this anymore, and they're they're registered voting. It's true. I think people are, you know, also afraid of. Uh, I mean, you're not everyone in the government is as approachable as you are. You know, it's true. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, that was Barney Frank. Yeah. That was at the Freedom Rally. A lot of background noise on that one. Yeah, but that was good. That was like when we met, like we had, we, had, we had, had him on our show. Yep. We had Barney Frank on our show, and he like we had a really good show with him. A good segment. It was quick. He liked it. And uh, like <laughs> then we were watching him speak. And Heather and I just basically got the crowd riled up. And you could hear <laughs> we were so loud for Barney Frank. We started a big chant for him. And... His husband, Jim, who, who Howie Carr calls the dude, mm. the dude was up there and he was taking pictures of us and the dude wanted to send us a, a pictures, but we had forgot our cards. We uh, had given them all away. It's a freedom rally. Yeah, you run out of yeah, shit. Oh, yeah. And by the time you're down to the stage, it's like, we're Mike Cannon, Heather Mack. We were out of cards. So yeah. like with our tents <laughs> a mile away, there's 8 million people there. We brought them there. So... You know, and he's like, "You don't have a business card. You're not professional." And he oh, said that man. the dude did. <laughs> wow. wow, I saw that clip. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. like, "Call us amateurs. Oh, call us amateurs." Oh. And had to cut that out, but <laughs> you got to throw that in. That was like the best part of it because we threw it out there. It's like, no, we're not amateurs. We got our camera going, dude. Yeah, That's how we that. roll. We don't need business cards. Exactly. Well, we he, got the footage and I had have, the Mac. You got Bonnie and the dude. You had them both going. It was fucking <laughs> like awesome. And they knew who we were. They're like. Like, they loved us. Awesome. They were like, yeah, you know? It was like, got, we're got, like a foursome. Right on. <laughs> oh, that was great. And you know what? While we're on the topic of Barney Frank, let's listen in. Oh, this was when we actually had him on the show. That was, again, one of the most insane shows we've ever done with Barney Frank and Guar in the same day. Woo. So let's hear. I'm just picking a random part in this clip. So let's hear what he's saying. Uh, when he, we, when we were back when we were two hotheads on cannabis. Oh, yeah. We, were, we had a different show. And he wasn't afraid of our name. So. No, he was all <laughs> over. He was. Let's he, hear it. Let's hear from that. Spoken, um, you know, proponent in terms of, you know, marijuana legalization, obviously, obviously gay rights, women's rights. Um, you're, you're leaving. This is your last term in Congress, and, uh, you know, all of us are going to miss you. Um, as, as activists that are still trying to, you know, make change statewide and federally, 
um, you know, who can we count on in the government, in Congress, um, to really represent these ideas? Well, there are different issues. Uh, first, I expect to be still very active. Uh, and with regard particularly to marijuana, we're still in the advocacy stage there. Uh, you know, we aren't yet to the point where we've got the votes to pass the bill. By the way, I think if my colleagues voted what they really believed and understood, we, we could get uh, marijuana legalized. But I think it's a case of cultural lag. The, the, the politicians are still afraid that if they vote to allow adults to smoke marijuana, which would do those adults less damage than smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol, both of which are legal, that somehow they'd be punished politically. I think the public's moved beyond that. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, but, but we don't yet have the vote. So I, I will still be doing the advocacy on that. On gay rights, uh, not being there, I won't be able to do it much. There, there are a couple of people. Uh, I think you're going to see uh, a couple of women, frankly, emerge. Um, Senator uh, Tammy Baldwin, if she wins the Senate races, I hope she will. She's going to be the Democratic nominee in Wisconsin. And if she becomes the senator from Wisconsin, uh, the first openly gay lesbian person in the Senate, that'll be very helpful. And uh, the other thing I hope is that Christine Quinn, who's now the Speaker of the New York City Council, who's uh, a lesbian married to a partner in New York or about to get married, this should be the next mayor in New York. And uh, those two, it'll be a case where two very articulate, thoughtful women will be in a position to do a great deal. Excellent. That's great. That's incredible. All right, that was Barney Frank. That was back in... On March 19th, 2012. And that was... Uh, it St. Patrick's Day, too, yeah, right? I think so. I had my drunk friends calling in on that yeah. show. It was a wild... It was a great... Guag just got people going. And Barney Frank. Yep. People were, like, nuts on that show. And uh, the when, the Barney Frank thing, like, I was scared of him. Like, when we talked to him... <laughs> I talked to Jim on the phone, both of them. I, it was like I was calling the home. And... Um, his staff is amazing. I love Barney Frank. I've dealt with a lot of politicians doing the booking, mm-hmm. a lot of the booking of these guests. And uh, we also got in Diane Russell right after that. Like yeah. uh, we, another person that we love having on the show. And it's, we'll have a clip from her later on. too. Oh no way! Yeah, totally. Oh, we I got, got so them, many clips. Got them all queued up. Yeah, it's been a great year, and we're gonna keep it going. Uh, let's take a quick musical break, and uh, we'll be back with our our guy from Alternet. Uh, what's his name? We're going to get his you name. Gotta, I think it was you fine. You still don't have his name? All right, this is ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, we'll have plenty of uh, plenty more clips. This is why you love us. Admit it's it, going to so. be fine. <laughs> uh, We've been doing this for a year now. Yeah, we have. We're, we're experts. We're professionals. Yeah. We still don't have cards. Sorry. No, I do. We got uh, cards. We, <laughs> oh, do, we do, actually. Oh my it's God. my address, We've but you know, it. it's, it's, it's <laughs> our stuff. It's all of You're us. Right. All right, all right. My kid has just picture. handed me a card. Yeah. So it's got our phone number on it. Apparently, for the real, radio show, we're real legit now. It's we got to call up Barney. It's good. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we'll uh, take a quick break and we'll be back. Keep listening to Hotheads, where activism happens on unregulated radio. Unregulated radio.com.